just do that. Let's go. So what question do you want to start with? Someone, someone pick one. Ele oh, we're just going to shouting. Okay. Well, so eleven. Do. Eleven. What about number eleven? Um. Can Can you show like so on the graph if it's? Uh, can you talk about it? Sure. Panic. First question says express the water pressure as a function of the depth. Solnit. The water pressure as a function of the depth. When you are writing a function, when you've seen functions before, you traditionally write what as a function of what? You traditionally write y, y as a function of x. So when you're writing this coordinate, you're going to write depth, comma, water pressure. You're inputting depth and you're outputting water pressure. So you're going to have water pressure equaling something in terms of depth. Exactly. So do we have two coordinates? Yeah, yes. Good. When the depth is zero, the pressure is 15. 15. And when the depth is 10, the pressure is? Yes, exactly. So. We said 4.34. Below the surface, the water pressure increases by 4.34 pounds per inch for every 10 feet of descent. Right, so at 10 feet, of, isn't, the depth would be 10. And the pressure would be 19.34 because at the surface, as it says in the first sentence, the air pressure and the water pressure are the same, 15 pounds per square inch. Okay. Do you have oh, the question in front yes. of you? 15 plus 4.34 is 19.34. Okay. So we need the equation of a line. What formula are we going to use? What do I like you using? Yeah. In this case, though, we're writing it like which one's x and which one's y? Oh, it's going to be yp minus yp1 equals m times d minus d1. Which coordinate do we like better, the first one or the second one? I like the first one. Remember, that's depth, comma, water pressure. So 15, my, oh sorry, wp minus 15 is equal to, well we need the slope, it's going to be 19.34 minus 15 over 10 minus 0, d minus what? What's D1? What? Zero. Zero, yeah, exactly. So you end up with WP is equal to 4.34 over 10 times D plus 15. So if water pressure is equal to 0.434 D plus 15. Good. When D is zero, what's the water pressure? 15. When D is 10, what's the water pressure? Exactly. We have a linear function. Or it tells us it's linear. Yes, Andy? Depends on, uh, you could, you could, but it's just, you have to be very clear about the definition of your variables. Just be very clear. In this case, what does D equal? Depth below the surface. If this is if this model is true, anybody know what the deepest spot on the planet is? Where it where it is? What? Is Marion? Is it the is it is it the Laurentian abyss? Laurentian abyss or the Marion? If Marion's trench off the coast of Japan, I think is that it? What? Which which one? It is. Yeah. But it's not the deepest one. Is not off the coast of California. I think the deepest one is out in the Pacific. It's not. It's. It's the trench is definitely way farther. It's not on a. It's not next to a coast. No, it's, it's out in like open area, ocean. Well, I'll look it up. The yeah, point is, area. does anybody know what the deepest spot with 33,000 feet? I think it is. Is that the deepest spot? It's at least 30,000. Um, but let's just say we went to 25,000 feet. If you went to 25,000 feet, the water pressure at 25,000 feet, 0.434 times. Now here's the thing. Does the is this model always going to hold? Probably not. If we actually do that out, you end up with 0.434 times 25,000 plus 15. That's 10,865 pounds. Uh, what is what's the unit they're using? Pounds per inch squared, right? Um, I don't know if it's that high. I think it's uh, it, it tails off a little bit. Uh, I don't think it's that. I'll look up the depth and the water pressure. I think it's. I think for. I think the linear model only holds for a certain depth, or it's only decently accurate for a certain <laughs> from the surface area down. I'm not sure how far it goes. Okay. Any other questions? So oh, I'll check can we this. Talk about graphing that? What? Can we talk about graphing that? Graphing what? This one that you. This equation you just did. 
it's a straight line, what would you like to know? Like I said that for um, heat under the sea, I made it negative 20 and I have zero. Nope. That's, yeah, that's you didn't define your variables like they did. You need to do what they did, which is D is the depth below the surface. So what's it going to look like? Just plot the points. We have two points here. 0, 15. 0, 15. And 10 what? 19.34. Is this the scale? No, but there it is. And what's this? This is the depth. And what do you get out? The water pressure. As the depth increases, what happens to the water pressure? It goes up. Goes up. Okay, another one. What, are, what other one do you want to ask about? Can you be specific in your questioning? Be specific in your questioning. No. Uh, this would be the regression line between two points. Yes. So can you explain what is regression? Line of best fit? Yes, it's the line of best fit. But in this case, the line of best fit and the line are the same thing because we only have the minimum set of data, which is how many data points? Two. There's no real regression here. One and then two. Yes. For question number ten. Yes, Danilo. Ah, so in this one, a number 10, you're trying to figure out, um, express the cost of the furniture of the number of chairs, express the cost as a function of the number of chairs produced. Cost as a function of number of chairs produced. And I was like, we started doing this in the other class, y as a function of x. So what's our coordinate going to be? Number of chairs, comma what? Cost. So we have two points, right? What are our two points on number 10? Uh, number of chairs is uh, 100 chairs for 4,800. No, 221. Thank you. Thank you. I, was r I went the wrong way with my reading. And our other coordinate is 4,800. So we do the exact same thing we just did, except with those two points. Same thing. And then what do they represent? OK, so let's write it out here. Let's write it out. So it says, um, so we're doing. Um, so remember, this is uh, this is number of chairs, and that's cost. So 4,800 minus 2,200 over 300 minus 100 is 26 over 2, which is 13. So this was right here was the change in what? Change in cost, and this is the change in number of chairs. So that means that what is it telling us? It's thirteen dollars per chair made to make the chair not so not necessarily the materials the chair so to, to, to make another chair per hour costs thirteen dollars so that's the first part you asked about and the second thing is what does the y intercept represent so if you write this function you end up with I like let's use that point right there so we end up with um, uh, cost minus twenty two hundred equals 13 times number of chairs minus what? 100? Is that correct? So we have cost is equal to 13 <laughs> number, I th you could use that I guess, uh, minus 1300 plus 2200. So you end up with cost is equal to 13 times the number of chairs plus what? So what is the y-intercept? Is 900. What does that represent? Can someone tell me what that represents? Yeah, it's 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 you have to be kind of careful because it's not necessarily all the materials, right? It's like a, a original cost. It might be the like how much it would cost to, to run the factory. To run the factory, or it's like the setup fee. You could think of it that way. Has anybody ordered something like uh, T-shirts before off the internet? Uh, yeah. yeah, you have like a base price plus, you know, the price goes down per, ch you know, if you buy, f if you buy one shirt, it costs like $100, but if you buy 10 shirts, it costs $20 because it's only, it's $10 more after $100. Like, you have to set up, like when I order discs, there's a fee for every, every color I use, there's a base fee. Like, they have, to, they have to set up the machine for that color and that's 25 bucks, right? For every, every layer that I use isn't like 30 bucks, but then every disc is like six bucks plus those initial fees. So it's $900 to like maybe pay the people, but it's not necessarily all of the materials. Considering in this model, how much does it cost in this model right here? How much does it cost to make uh, one chair? $13. No, nine hundred and thirteen dollars. Because the setup fee is nine hundred thirteen dollars, right? Two chairs is nine hundred and twenty-six, right? So, if this right here is how much it costs to 
run the, if that's how much it costs to make the chairs, what's the what would be the formula for the average cost per chair? This is the cost to make the chairs, right? And then what do you divide by? Number of chairs, right? So you would end up with 13 plus 900 over number of chairs. What's the cheapest possible chair you could? What's how? Not how many chairs, but the more chairs you make, the average price of the chair goes down. How low could we theoretically get it? As close as we want to to 13. Can we ever get to 13? No. no. How many chairs? Here's a question for you. How many chairs would I have to make um, for the average cost to be 15 bucks? Four hundred and what? Four hundred and fifty, right, exactly. Four hundred and fifty, exactly. Thirteen plus two. Plug four hundred and fifty into there, you get thirteen plus nine hundred or four fifty. Yeah, exactly. Any other questions from this? The not stock part. The not stock part. Okay, we can talk about the stock now. That's fine. So please take out your stock analysis, those of you that actually did the homework. And in in general, everybody. If your homework results in you just thinking about stuff, try to write some down of what you're thinking. That would be awesome. So let's talk about this. So can someone tell me something that they observed about Google? So something they observed about, raise your hand, we'll use hands here. What did people observe about Google stock? Something you observed about Google stock. Use hands. Solnit. Well, there was a period of like, um, it went on for a year or two where every single reading, it was, um, they divided it two to one. What do you mean? Uh, the, the original closing was twice as big as the adjusted closing. The original? So, so it meant that their, their stock closing price went down. Two to one between split. what? I'm sorry, I don't understand. They, they did a two to one split like, on everything they're reading. Uh, like From one month to what month? I'm, so, I'm sorry, what's the gap you're talking about? So they, do, they double the price of the stock every. No, they have. They have the price of the stock? Yeah, I'm trying to find. Okay, think about that for a sec and be more. Okay, there was a period of. What's one thing someone else noticed? We'll come back. The Taglia. Um, so roughly, Google is twice as small. What do you mean twice uh, twice as sorry, much? Uh, uh huh. What is? The so the Google's one one share of Google is roughly twice as valuable as one share of Apple stock as of 1111. Okay, that's okay. That's an observation. I noticed that uh, if you take a period of time as one year, yep. both of them uh, increase by somewhat, decrease the price of uh, shares by certain price. So every, every year, uh, price of the of the stock falls down. I don't understand. So if, if you keep increasing by by year. What increasing? The price of the stock. Price of the stock. Okay, yeah. In in, a, in every period of time. Yeah. It falls down by a certain amount. I don't. It by, doesn't. By, by a little much. It falls. It falls. Oh, so you mean that the closing price every year is lower than the starting price at the beginning of the year? No, it's by much. It's by much. It's higher. But it's oh, so each best. so each company. Each company's stock is worth more at the end of every year. Right, but between two between one between two months yep. period of time it decreases every okay. single year. Every single year it'll go I'm sorry. Say this again. Between two months. You pick any two months. Yep. In every single year it yep. decreases by some. Okay. Between any two months the price goes down. Between, between two months in a year. How but would not it go? Every two months. So oh, there's always two months. It decreases, it decreases. Once, so every, you're saying once a year, at, there's at least one time yeah. where it goes down for two consecutive months. Right. Okay. I was wondering there. Um, uh, both companies 
each year year have at least one two month period where their stock declines in value. Got it. Understood. Oh. Yes, Faria. Uh, actually, I pick up the temper data in every year for Apple and Google. And yep. I found Apple is much stable than, than Google. That's a very good observation. Uh, Apple is. I found it from a coalition quotation, and the one R is 0.8, and the other one R is 0.95. 0.8 and versus 0.95? Yeah. yeah. And Apple is much better than. So I think if I want to buy a stock to yep. make some money in a short yep. time, I will buy So Apple is more of a sure bet. Okay. Or an immediate money maker. Well, not necessarily. It's more of a sure bet. Stability over time is what she's talking about. Let's talk about Apple now, specifically Apple. What can you tell me about Apple? Back left, yeah. Um, the, in 2010, the stock values of the Google Whereas in Google, say, Stable, stable increase. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I have a question. Yes, go ahead. I don't know a whole lot about stocks, so I was wondering if anybody observed, like, if I had to put my money in on like a certain day and then the next date taken it out, like, how would you figure out, what, like, if I was only going to leave my money in for a month? Mm-hmm. Which, how, how would you figure out which one would be a sure bet, like for people who are doing that? The biggest well, look, it's, it's pretty simple. Look at how much one stock is worth in one month. Yeah. Look how much that same stock is worth, worth in another month. Okay. So you buy low and you sell high. sell high. So you buy the stock one month and you sell it later when that same stock is worth a different value and you either lose or gain money. That's the whole point. Yes. Well, what What'd you observe? Yeah. Was actually it was in Apple's like the first, uh, eight, like almost most of the first page you gave us. Yep. About half of it. Where if you look at the original closing price. Yep. It was actually through like O five. Yep. Or four, where the okay. the adjusted price was half of the original closing, which kept the the um the closing price down. The you're, I'm sorry. Can you be? I need you to say that clearer. You're saying the adjusted price. The adjusted closing price is half of what the original. What are you looking at right now? Which which one? Uh, 2004 for Apple. 2004 for Apple. The adjusted. <coughs> you're saying the the last column, the adjusted, is half of what? Of the original closing. The, uh, On that same month. Yeah. Give me one line. Which line are you looking at? What date? 104. What? Because the the original closing is the. Which line are you looking at, please? Oh, look at that! Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that wouldn't that indicate a two to one split, right? Where yeah, can you explain to us what that means? It means that um, they they cut the the price of their stock in half, and everyone that owns shares yeah. has twice as many shares, but it keeps the price of one share down. Yeah. Why do you do that? So that people will still invest. Apple so split its stock several times in 2004. That's a great observation. I like that. So why do you do that? Everybody has the same amount of value, right? Yeah, but it, it keeps the price down and makes it look more appealing than that. It makes it makes it easier to buy stock. Yeah. If yeah, if a stock costs less, it's easier to buy one, right? So like basically, people who had one stock worth fifty dollars now they have two worth twenty five. But you they only have to pay another twenty dollars. Yes, but the point is, if someone wanted to buy a stock that day, the next day you could spend twenty five dollars and buy one stock. Okay. It allows a finer delineation. Yeah, huh. it's easier to get in. Does it overall change the value of the company? Not, not generally, no. Okay, another observation, no, Chamberlain. Just, no, yeah, sure. Once the people who originally had the stock, would they get mad because now one stock is? No, but they have double the number. Same thing. You go to bed and you have one stock worth fifty dollars. You wake up and you have two stocks worth twenty five. It's the same exact thing. It's the same exact thing. It means the next morning someone else could say, I want to buy one stock and it only costs them $25. Right now, if you want to buy a Google stock, what's your minimum investment? 600 in Google? 600 and something dollars, right? But you, you can't buy like 0.2% of a stock. If you want to buy a piece of it, you need to have a cheaper, cheaper stock. Okay, other observations. Here, yeah. Yeah. Google's price and Apple's price keep increasing from 
Yeah. Yeah, but they yeah exactly. I was wondering who brought that book. Because of financial reasons. Yeah, yeah. Well, everybody. But it wasn't what, like I was. Okay, quiet. Well, we can have the talking stick if we need to. Someone who hasn't spoken yet. Yeah. Um, like with Apple. Yeah, Apple. Uh, like in the starting years of four and five, it's constantly increasing like when it's popular. So it's you, yeah, you it, you you see some periods of constant increase. That's very interesting. Okay, so let's ask about, we've had a lot of information out there right now. So if you had to choose between investing money in Apple or Google, which one would you invest in? No, Apple. <laughs> There's no right answer, kids. Yeah. Okay, who, who would invest in Apple? Why? They're doing, in two sentences. They're doing really well right now. And stock be more specific. Fairly consistently going up. Be more specific. Someone be more specific. Why would you invest in Apple? Gochran. Okay, be more specific. So? so it's to buy. Ah, it's easier to buy. You could get in easier. Sure. Yeah. That's a good one. You, you were set up at the beginning. The big reason people like to invest in Apple is, someone say it. Stable. stable. The stability of the growth is wildly stable in a market that you see. I mean, look, if we looked at other companies, we're looking at two highly successful companies. These are unbelievably successful companies. If you look at other sectors, stock prices tend to go crazy all over the place. If you look at 10 years, all over the place. Yeah. Um. Ah, there we go. Hold on. There we go. Good bridge. Okay, very good thing to bring up. We've been basing our analysis of what stock to buy based on what the stock value is right now, just values. But is that all that people look at? No, people tend to read a lot of what? Articles, Wall Street Journal, everything, any, any information they can come out. So what's coming out? Verizon stock last week spiked way up. Why? iPhone's coming out February 3rd, right? Um, projected profits based on projected products. So a lot of research goes into this. Who's seen Wall, the Wall Street movies? That's all they do. They, they do research, 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 and then cross some moral line. And what did we call them? Uh, the stock market mafia. is just, The mafia. All <laughs> right. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, I just, like you were talking about, yep. the Apple stock per share wasn't worth anywhere near as much. Stock analysis, you have to consider something huge. Um, the value of one stock isn't so important. Why? You need to also to look at what? The volume, meaning what? You need to look how at how many, how many stocks there are. So, um, if you know one company had a million stocks worth ten dollars each, they're worth how much? What's their net worth? Ten million dollars. If I have a million stocks worth fifty dollars each, fifty million dollars. It gets more complicated when you have different numbers of stock. You know, com do companies all have the same volume of stock? No. Absolutely not. What happens when it's called diluting stock? You can create more. Um, that's how that guy in the social network lost all his money, Saverin, um, when they screwed the, the the first CFO over. He had 30% of stock, he had like 24 million shares, and then they diluted it to like 48 million or many like many million, right? And instead of diluting everybody's stock, they just diluted his. Do you understand what that means? So it's like, imagine all of us own 5% of a company, and then we want, to make, we want to make more shares. So we could double the number of shares and give everybody the double the number of, of stocks, and we'd have the same amount of money divided equally, right? What they did is they needed to create more pieces of the company, so they took his piece and just broke it up in lots of tiny pieces. So his share went from an overall like 30-something percent to 0.03 percent. No, because the document that he signed and didn't really read said that they could do that. They totally misled him and ended up settling for an estimated $600 million, which sounds like a lot of money, but he probably would have a net worth of around $3 billion right now. Yes? May I ask something? If a company yes. experiences a complete bankruptcy... So you looked at things like, okay, if, if, Google, if Google stock goes up by 25 bucks, is that more or less significant than Apple stock going up by 25 bucks? More, more because Google's volume. <laughs> <laughs> ah, there's no clear answer. There you go. One way to look at it is as follows: Google stock is worth 600 and something bucks, right? Going up by 25 bucks. That's a much smaller percentage than if 350 goes up by 25 bucks. But the overall volume 
could mean that 25 bucks could make the company. I mean, if okay, Apple stock is 300 and something bucks, 350 bucks. Google stock is 600 and something bucks. I don't know what the volume is. I don't know which one's worth more. I know Apple's now worth more than Microsoft. But if the overall volume of stock of Apple Google is way larger, three million shares. Three million. Apple had like 21 million. 21 million. Yeah. So the point is, when Apple stock goes up by 25 dollars, it's a more significant, more significant of 30, 30. 30, 350 bucks, but how many shares are there? Way more. So the overall value of the company goes much higher. When you look at those stock tickers that go by, you see things go up and down by what? What do they call them? Stock prices go up a the points, right? And points represent what? A percentage point. So when stock goes up by a point, it means the overall value of the stock went up 1%. If you keep track of those point values, it's all by 1%. So do you ever see like, you know, Google stock, you, sometimes you see Google stock went up by 50 bucks, right? But is that really what they reported as? No, they reported as a percentage based on what it's currently worth at the beginning of the day. So, you know, the stock market closed up so many points. That means compared to when it started, it's up this percentage. Am I able to explain to you all the index systems? Absolutely not. I am not able to explain those. I can't even begin to try to explain the index systems to you. Yes. So everybody's selling their Apple stock right now because they're all freaked out. So if they can, what? everybody's selling their Apple stock right now. Because, who? Well, who? Who, who insane person is selling their Apple stock no, right oh, now? Okay, so Apple. Who? Of, who? Mr. Mr. Rice was talking about the contemporary issues. Okay. Okay. A, um, a lot of people have started selling their Apple stock okay. because they're dumb and think that Steve Jobs being sick. Is oh yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. So okay, every, I see what you're saying. If everybody. Sold their stock, wouldn't they? Would the company immediately go bankrupt? No, because to sell your stock, you have to sell it to someone. Oh, okay. So, but, but what, who like, will buy it? I don't. I'm sorry. It's, it's a redistribution. No, 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 no. You, it's very. You can't do. You either own your stock or someone else owns it. Unless you're selling to Google. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 But, but the point is, the point is to sell your stock. Yes. Can you can you manipulate major corporations by inducing sell-offs? Absolutely. If you start with mass sell-offs, the like overall value can go down because it's a less desired stock. You're right. The overall value of the company can decrease, but it takes a massive amount of sell-off to do that. Right, because doesn't everybody or a lot of people who do like online stock stuff, they have like that automatic sell line. Yeah, yeah. So if the company falls, goes below, it automatic. So yeah. If we all had that automatic sell line. Yeah. And what what would happen if when we all cross that automatic sell? Well, we've already seen the worst that can happen, which is global <laughs> catastrophe. <laughs> <laughs> To answer your question the more the sharpest way possible. Yeah, no. So you said that either the owner's stock or someone owns stock. I don't know if there's stock limbo. I would imagine there is. Okay, but yeah, I I I would say that with relative certainty. You either own it or somebody no, else owns it. So when you're so selling stock, that, how do you how that, does that work? Does that, Go ahead. That unless someone buys the stock, like the stock can get to get paid No. Like, no like, oh no, when you buy stock, you're usually buying it from somebody else who already owns it. So no new stock is being created. Unless, unless they, they split. Unless, unless they do a split. Okay. Or I, I cannot explain these markets have, like, to you. I don't understand yeah, them. Yeah, like what a stock broker does is like the broker will find the broker term will like maybe owns it. Yeah. Someone who wants to yeah. sell stock in that company. Or the, or the company or the broker term will own the stock and then sell it to clients. Which is what's being done right now with Facebook stock, which doesn't actually exist but kind of exists. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, what? Does anybody? Hey, come on. We've looked at. Linear models, and we've looked at quadratic models. We're going to add in power models, which are just pieces of polynomials. All of those, all of those graphs right there, there's y equals x to the first, y equals x squared, y equals x cubed, to the fourth, to the fifth. Those are all power functions. They all go through the? Origin. They are all either odd or? Even. Yes. Um, all the even functions go through the point 0, 0, 1, 1, and? Negative 1, 1. Why? 1 to the 10th is 1. 1 to an even power is? Negative 1 to an even power is always, what happens as the power changes? What's the only thing that changes? The rate of increase. The rate of increase, so it gets steeper or less steep. But those three points stay the same. What happens with an odd-powered function? They always go through 0, 0, 1, 1, and? Negative 1, negative 1. What's the only thing that changes again? How it's steep it is, how steep it, the curve is. You can use these functions to make more accurate models of data. You have cubic regression, quartic regression on your calculator. That's what it's running right there. You also have fractional powers. If you have a square root or an even root, looks, you've seen the square root function. It kind of looks like that. And this is the cube root function. Have you seen something that looks like that before? No. In trig land, what is that? Bonus point right now if you can tell me what trig graph that looks like. Which one? Five. Negative. What? Negative. Tan what? Negative one. Bingo! We have a winner right there. Tan inverse. Tan inverse. Tan inverse. Then you have the reciprocal function. 
You will do the same exact thing you did for homework last night tonight, except that instead of doing linear regression, you're going to run different regressions. You're going to run quartic regressions or cubic regressions. They're the same idea, R squared values, curves of best fit, but you're going to have different functions. You're going to use your calculator, and your homework is going to be all of this right here. So this is your homework right here. Even though it says classwork, you're going to do it all for homework. Get out of here.